Once the boat was completely dry and the paint had cured for a few days, then the next big project was to get ready to do final assembly on all the pieces. And everything had to start with those oak runners on the floor because everything else is going to anchor to them and then anchor to what's above that one step at a time. So the <clears throat> hardware that I decided to use for all the pieces of the boat is stainless steel. That way it wouldn't rust out. So I had to have a stainless steel bolt and a stainless steel washer on either side and a stainless steel nut for every single hole that was drilled through the frame. And then one at a time, make sure those were cranked into final alignment and final tightness so that they wouldn't come loose. Because once the floorboard was on, it's going to be hardest to get to these again. So I went through and made sure all of the struts were lined back up and the bolts were in and everything was tightened down completely. oak cross slats for the reinforcement for the floor are screwed into place and they've been soaked in two coats of Thompson water seal so the oak should be stable should be nice and strong it's not going to warp the screws are in place hold it to the frame now we're going to put some thread lock on all those nuts so as we're bouncing around on the waves they can't come out Doesn't take very much. That's it. That's all we need. Just enough to hold it in place. So here we have the two floor panels. They've been primed and painted, but now some of those holes where the screws go that are countersunk are full of paint. So now I'm just going to go through. And make them nice and clean so the screws will go in there deep. So I'm using the same countersink bit and drill that I used when I drilled the original holes. And I did this deliberately because I wanted to have the holes pre-countersunk into the floor and have the pilot holes for those screws to go through the floorboards and into the oak runners pre-drilled and open and located in the right positions before I did any of the painting. And so I put water seal on the oak I put primer and then paint on the floorboards and I deliberately filled each of those holes. So I had to come back with the same drill bit to come back and make the heads of the screws fit in the position they were in before. But now the primer and the paint is down inside those layers of the plywood. So if there's water that gets in around those screws, it won't start to deteriorate the wood near as easily. So. Once I had those holes cleaned back out, I put both the floorboards down inside the boat. And the critical step was the very first screw. All the holes in the oak are already drilled. So I didn't want to just barely miss with the first one because that would mean every single screw that I put in was going to just barely miss and punch another hole in the oak that isn't sealed. So I put the screw a little bit, just poking out the bottom of the, of the board. And you can see right there, I'm, I'm bouncing it back and forth. And if you pay close attention and use the right amount of pressure, you can feel where the screw point drops down into the hole that was already lined up in the oak. And once I was sure the first screw was in, I tightened it. And then without doing anything else, I went all the way to the other end of the boat. 
and I had to make sure that the first screw on the other end went into its runner as well. And once I was sure both of those were aligned and had a screw in each one, then it was simply a matter of going through and dropping screws back in all the holes because I knew all the oak holes underneath were perfectly lined up with all the countersunk holes on top. So that's a critical step. You got to make sure that the first screws actually hit their target. Otherwise, every single screw will miss and start to put holes that you don't want. So I got the whole first board tacked down that way. And then I went to the other board and I had to do the same thing. I had to make sure the very first screw was just barely poking out, slide it around till it's lined up, and then go to the other end and do the same thing. And once they're lined up and it's in there, then the, that seam down the center of the floor was nice and tight. Everything was aligned the way it was supposed to. And I knew all the holes underneath were gonna be lined up correctly. Okay, then you kinda of have to play the same game with these pieces in the front. They're small, but they're easier to get out of alignment. So I had to make sure that each one went in in order. Each one hit the screw holes that it was supposed to hit. And on this board, I had one extra hole I missed with the drill bit because that little support board wasn't as long underneath there as I thought it was. So I had to make sure the two holes that I had to use were lined up. And then I filled the other one with paint so it was sealed. And with those last two screws right there, that's pretty much the end of attaching the floor. So then I went on to the back deck and there's a little shelf back there and that has to go on first because the pieces of the transom sit in and around that. So I had to get the screws through the board and through the little metal collar that's on the side of the boat and get those tightened up. And then I went on to the pieces of the transom. And there was the same thing. There was holes were filled with paint and coated. And I had to drive the bolts in there to make sure they went in the way I wanted them to. And I countersunk one of them and filled that countersunk hole, that one right there, so that when the motor sits on there, it's not sticking out. Okay, and then I had to line up all those big bolts. These are quarter inch stainless steel bolts from the outside. And then make sure that once we were ready to go, I took that heavy duty Liquitex, um, it's like a silicone specifically for marine grade seals. And I covered all those bolts on the inside of the transom so that when it got tightened up against the boat, it would seal that. I didn't want water leaking through the boat hole at the points of the bolts. Okay, and then I had the inside piece, had the same problem. I had to drill those out and make sure that the paint and all the coat that was down in the bolt holes was back to the original dimensions. And then everything lined back up. And once I pounded it together, all the bolts from the outside lined up with the holes on the inside. And I put big washers and big quarter inch stainless screws and bolts on the inside. And then everything was all lined up. So I tightened those down and then I moved on to working on the benches. And one at a time, the flotation boxes, I attached to the benches first. So you can kind of see that underneath there. And then I had to use the stainless steel bolts and nuts to attach it to the vertical risers coming off the floor and the side supports that were bolted into the side of the frame and get all those nuts all the way in there in a line and then I had to go back and one at a time make sure they were all tight. And this is kind of a slow meticulous process but I did that for each bench all the way around the boat and got all the bolts through the flotation boxes and then all the bolts through all the frame supports and then had to tighten them up. It was a little tricky to not lose pieces. If you dropped one of those little nuts, it would go under that crack at the edge of the floorboard and try to go underneath the boat. So I had to be careful to not lose the stuff. But eventually I got all the pieces put together. Okay, update. The boat was painted, completely dried. 
all of the components that we had painted in the garage have now been assembled. So the transom is mounted and between the transom and the hull I put some heavy duty silicone type stuff that seals all those bolt holes. All the bolts have Loctite so they can't get unthreaded. The shelf, the benches, all the floor decks, everything is all completely screwed into place now. So I decided I didn't want to have to sit on raised screw heads. So all the ones that are in the center where somebody's going to have to sit, I countersunk part of the thickness of the plywood with a Forstner bit and screwed them in there and mounted them. Everything's tight. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a piece of black like Gorilla Tape or uh, Gaffer's Tape and cut circles that I can cover the screw head and then I'm going to seal, seal, seal those with the same silicone stuff. I sealed the other thing with so you can pick out the silicone and pick out the tape and you can still get back in there but the water needs to be able to not get in the wood so as soon as I do that the only thing left to do inside is I'm gonna put a piece of molding on this shelf so if you put stuff down there it doesn't want to roll off and probably have to either paint or stain or water seal that and screw that into the face of this shelf once that's done, the inside of the boat is completely square. And the only thing left to do will be the handrails. So I have a 14 foot piece of mahogany I'm gonna rip down the center. And then I'm gonna steam bend two big long outside rails in one piece and then mount oar locks and everything on the inside. So should be pretty cool when we get done. Making serious progress now though. So this is a roll of black gaffer's tape they use it to hold down cables on stages and stuff like that. It's kind of like duct tape but the adhesive isn't so crazy. It's designed to come back up without being sticky. So I put a piece of that tape on to a big sheet of wax paper. And then in my drill press I put a punch. And I usually use this sharp punch to cut holes out of leather but for this it works perfect. So I could just put it up against a piece of scrap wood and cut out a bunch of discs out of the tape that now have backing that are the same diameter as the screw holes. So I took those out to the boat and carefully had to pick the wax paper off the bottom. And then I basically had a little black sticker that would cover up the screw head for each one of those ones that I countersunk down into the wood. So I carefully picked all those off and went around and covered up all the screws so that once I put the sealer in there, it wouldn't fill the head of the screw and make it impossible to get a screwdriver in. And then I took this Lexel, the same silicone stuff I've kind of used all over the boat, and carefully squirted a little gloop of that into the top of that recess and then used a glove finger to make sure that it adapted to all the edges of the wood and actually sealed the open plywood right there. So it sticks to the tape and it sticks to the sides of the wood, but nothing except the adhesive on the tape is sticking to the screw heads. So later we should be able to get them back out if we need to. All right, so the next project is all these bolts have a nut. They're all tight, but it won't take much to make that nut loose and it's gonna wanna slide right down these smooth stainless steel bolts. So trying to get the Loctite up underneath there is tricky. So what I'm gonna do is suck some into this syringe and then use a mirror to squirt it up in there. So I got some of this Loctite into the syringe and then I basically had to do a yoga pose with a mirror under every single one of those bolts all the way around to try and make sure they were sealed and couldn't spin loose on their own bouncing around. 